Hello YouTube. Uh, today I would like us to go back to Egypt, to the pyramids, and to the fabulous 18th century. And I'll speak about a very unusual pyramid. We don't know the whereabouts of this pyramid in our times, but it was observed before. Let me start from the beginning and give you interesting factual background. Voyage d'Egypte et de Nubie, or Voyage uh, to Egypt and to Nubia, recorded Frederick Louis Norden's extensive documentation and drawings of his voyage to Egypt in 1737 and 1738. I'll tell you more about Norden a little bit later. The book contained some of the very realistic first drawings of Egyptian monuments and to this day remains a primary source for the looks of the Egyptian monuments before the widespread 19th and 20th century tourism and excavations. The Royal Danish Academy of Sciences and Letters, under the uh, order of the King of Denmark, uh, uh, first published the book in 1755. Norden has already done some preliminary work, but got entangled in war service for England and died in France in 1742 of tuberculosis before anything was ready. He was he left all his documents and drawings to his friend and I'll get to it a little bit later. By the way, a very often used extract from this book is Norden's drawing of the Great Sphinx of Giza. As the first near-realistic drawing of the Sphinx, he is the earliest known to draw the Sphinx with the nose missing. Um, now let, let, let me tell you who Norden actually was. Uh, Frederick Louis Norden um, was a Danish naval captain, cartographer and archaeological explorer. You can imagine the fascinating life that he led. <clears throat> Norden uh, was born in Holstein Gluckstadt and he entered the Royal Danish Naval Academy at Copenhagen in 1722. He was sent on a study mission abroad in 1732. Norden made a voyage to Egypt all the way down to Sudan in the years that I told you about. At the request of King Christian VI of Denmark, he was to enter into a trade agreement with Ethiopia on behalf of Denmark. Norden made abundant notes, observations and drawings of everything around him, including people, pharaonic monuments, architecture, installation and maps. He, in 1741 he became a fellow uh, of the Royal Society of London. <clears throat> Norden had prepared the publication of his travel notes, all of which were published in his posthumous Posthumous Voyage d'Egypt and the Nubie, with my French pronunciation. Anyway, Carl Marcus Tuscher from Nuremberg, his friend, made the drawings into copper plates uh, for the publication. So the English edition of the book was published in 1757, in 1779 a German edition and then French edition in 1795. So if you can find this book. I, I think it's a great reading. And then let's speak about the mysterious pyramid. No one dares to challenge his description of the enigmatic fourth pyramid because any mistake is excluded here. The only nuance is where did this pyramid go after six decades? After all, Napoleon's army had already found the pyramids of Giza in the same form as we see them today. Modern researchers and Egyptologists either ignore the very fact of the description of the first pyramid by Norden or agree that there was one, but it disappeared. But how did it disappear? There is already a huge spread of opinions um, the one hypothesis says that the Egyptians hid it. Where did they hide it to? 
that it collapsed, it failed, flew into space, moved to another dimension. The shape of Egyptian pyramids is incredibly accurate from a geometric point of view. Another feature is a clear orientation to the four cardinal directions. The parts of the world of the ancient Egyptians, as well as the Maya Indians, as well as the ancient Chinese and the Golden Horde Tatars, they all had their own colors. For example, the Northern Pyramid of Cheops was lined with the white washed tiles. That is, it was white as a cottage cheese and was shining in the rays of the sun. If there was a white northern one, then there was also a southern black one, the researchers say. Northern observed it. It is also worth remembering that Frederick Norden has never been caught by anyone in a lie, either during his life or after his death. He wasn't a hoaxer. So, did the Black Pyramid of Giza really exist? The answer, according to Norden, is yes, it did. But where is it now? The second Dane, or rather a German, Carlsten Nybur, who also carried out the order of the Danish King Frederick to measure the Egyptian pyramids, in 1761 no longer describes a Black Pyramid. In 1761, Nibur, along with five young scientists, was sent on a trip to Arabia and neighboring countries by the King of Denmark. Arriving from Alexandria to Cairo, he completed his immediate task, drawing up the first detailed plan of Cairo with all the mosques, bazaars, streets, wells, canals, palaces, and cemeteries. And with the botanist for skull, accompanied by Arab guides, he went to Giza. The work was greatly complicated by the hostile attitude of the local population towards him, from the sheikh to the police, who constantly beat out money from him for work permits. Falaks were already always crowding around Nibur. They were going to smash his instruments, others laid curses on him. Even worse were the Saraji, policemen in national clothes, who constantly harass him, extorting bakshish. Once one of them simply forbade or forbid Nibur to copy some hieroglyphic inscription, threatening that if he did not immediately leave, he would be beaten with a whip. The Arab guide who knew the local customs advised not to contradict. Maybe such aggression towards Europeans was born in the Arabs after some events that followed after Norden's visit to Giza? There is no answer. Nibur began his study of the pyramids by using an astrolabe and a compass to determine their position and set their orientation relative to the cardinal directions with extraordinary accuracy. No errors were made. Nibur climbed the pyramid of Khufu, went down inside, measured what had not yet been measured. He also climbed the Hafra pyramid, despite the fact that the cladding preserved on its top forms alleged that is inaccessible even for an experienced climber. According to the method of laying the outer slabs, he determined that the pyramids were indeed lined from top to bottom, as it was written by Herodotus, and not vice versa. Nibur climbed both the pyramid of Menkaur and its satellites, the pyramids of Pharaoh's wives, and measured everything accurately. The results that he got are admirable. But he did not encounter any black pyramid. The biggest discrepancy between the current data and Nibur's data is the determination of the height of the Hafra pyramid. And the error here is only 80 centimeters. But where has the fourth black pyramid gone in 30 years after Norden's visit? 
maybe it was some kind of, contempor of, of, of temporary structure, the materialization of something immaterial. According to Norden's records, the fourth of the Great Pyramids was different from the others. Interestingly, he made, made of some kind of black stone, not inferior in strength to granite. It looked fascinating. Norden pointed out that all four, exactly so many pyramids, are located on the eastern and southern eastern parts of Giza. Not far from the Great Ones, there are small pyramids that do not go to any comparison with the main pyramids. The height of the Black Pyramid exceeded 150 meters. There were no temples or tombs inside it. But such a monument had a completely different feature. The peak of the pyramid was different from others. It was crowned by a colossal cube-shaped stone. Norden suggested that the cube could serve as a kind of pedestal, or it was just a self-sufficient statue. There was no clear answer in the collected materials. Despite the fact that the pyramid was made in black, its top, the cube was located on it, was much lighter. There the color of the stone was yellowish. The black pyramid was in a straight line with the other three, to the west of the others. But has no one else besides Northern from the Europeans ever seen this pyramid? It's worth noting that yes, uh, some have. A number of researchers have mentioned it. Of course, it was not possible to achieve recognition of the existence of the Black Pyramid from Egyptologists and representatives of the official scientific world. After all, there is no other confirmation of its existence. Even the fragments of it were gone, which partially confirms the boldest hypothesis that the pyramid was hidden in another dimension by those who had built it. Who? Invisible gods? as it is written on the wall of one of the tombs, which indicates who built the Egyptian pyramids. Maybe in the 1730s, there was still a space portal in Giza. And no wonder that uh, Northern notes say that there is no tomb there. But with the interest of the Europeans in this place and uh, visits to, to the area, the invisible ones teleported this object to another place? Just, there is no answer. We don't have it. But the, listen to this. The hypothesis does open incredible horizons. Listen, it's just a, some mysteries of the times of the Roman Empire that I have to get to and tell you about. Now, I want you to pay closer attention to another pyramid which is a very, very strange one in appearance. It is open to tourists, but due to its strong remoteness from Cairo, it is visited less often than the pyramids of the Memphis necropolis. This is the pyramid of the ancient kingdom at the junction of the thir third and fourth dynasties of the Egyptian pharaohs. Its original height was 92 meters. Today, the height is 65 meters. The length of the base side is 144 meters. I, I don't want to talk too much about it because it deserves a full video with all its secrets. But you see, Northern was somehow involved and I'll explain. So what do we see in May Doom? A huge stone tower that rests on a hill or a mountain. What were the construction stages? Well, one was the construction of a seven-step pyramid, two, expansion and rebuilding into an eight-step pyramid, three, facing in order to give the pyramid a classic look. What is the stru structure really like? The lower part hill is two steps of the pyramid, aligned in the classic pyramid style, and all this is under tons of construction debris and stone debris. Somewhere the cladding has been preserved well. Somewhere it has been badly damaged by erosion. At the corners it has been completely destroyed. In some places 
masonry fragments from other steps, most likely the third or fourth remained. The upper part tower today represents only three visible steps. Who built it? The pyramid belongs to the joint construction of the pharaoh of the third dynasty Huni and the founder of the fourth dynasty Snefru. It is difficult to say exactly how their joint work took place. Huni could start building a seven-step pyramid or even a mastaba and Snefru was already remaking it into the eight-step one. Maybe Huni was already building an eight-step pyramid and Snefru decided to give it a classic look. We don't know. At some point Huni passed away and Snefru inherited the throne and the construction site. I want to tell you about the chronology of research. The unusual forms of the pyramid were first reported in the 15th century by the Egyptian historian and geographer Al Makrizi. In the 18th century, Frederick Louis Norden described the pyramid and reported that only three steps were already visible. Only three steps. I, I cannot go to all the um, historical record and what was described and how the pyramid was researched. It's not for this video. I just wanted to mention that Norden was involved, but I will m mention that in 1999 Gilles Dormion and Jean-Yves Redhard, using mother instrument, discovered previously unknown rooms and passages in that pyramid. So there is more to this strange pyramid. I will get to it and other mysteries of the pyramids later from my research. But today I wanted to introduce you to the brave Danish naval officer who observed a very unusual pyramid that has since vanished. And maybe someday we will find out more about it. And then maybe we will find out more about other secrets of the universe. Well, I'll do my part to help guide you along. And uh, I thank you for your support and I ask those who can help me to use please do to please use the links in the uh, description to this video and um, there's much more I want to tell you about Eurasian paranormal but also mysterious pages of history for example of the Roman Empire because that empire was also uh, Parts of the country where I am from were also under the control of the empire and uh, left some very interesting phenomena we need to describe and of course much more that I've told you about in other videos and will continue to tell you. Thank you. Please subscribe to my channel and please tell others. I appreciate your help.